Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name's Frank, and today we're building an Ender 5 Plus. So this is actually the start to something pretty cool that I've been excited about for quite a while. Uh, first off, huge shout out to Creality for sending me this Ender 5 Plus. Uh, they we they want to do a cool little collaboration project. I finally kind of uh, caught their attention in the right way thanks to my Mark 85 cosplay. It was printed entirely on Creality printers and they really haven't let me down since. Uh, they're great, cheap, affordable, all of that. And I'll t I've told you guys the bad things, the things that break, the things that go wrong, and you know, they're DIY hobby printers. But once you get them working right, they're absolutely wonderful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this Ender 5 Plus and we're gonna actually take this through a whole series of videos. We're gonna build the Ender 5 Plus. We're gonna throw some pretty simple upgrades on it. We're gonna tune it and calibrate it and tighten it up and talk about the things that could go wrong and the things that you really never have to worry about. And then we're actually gonna print something pretty cool on it. Now, Creality wanted me to print an entire suit on just an Ender 5 Plus. I don't have the time for that. I have a lot of other projects going on and honestly, printing it on just one printer might take me a little bit. So we compromised. And what I'm actually gonna be doing is using just this printer alone to print an Iron Man bust similar to this. Now I haven't quite decided on what mark I wanna do yet. I, that's the cool thing about this. I have a little bit of free reign. I have a little bit of time to decide just what I wanna make. Now I can make the Mark 85. It's kinda of turned into a little bit of my staple, which I get. I could do something a little bit new, maybe like the Mark 42, maybe the iconic Mark 3. I don't know yet, but by the time we get to that point, this will be built calibrated, upgraded, whatever the heck we need to do to this thing. So in this first video, we're gonna be building the Ender 5 Plus exclusively. We're gonna go through, build this. It's gonna be a little bit of a time lapse. I'm gonna slow down and talk about the real crucial points and things that may might be confusing in the instructions, but let's jump right in. So aside from using this tiny knife, I'm actually gonna use all the tools that are provided to build this printer, turn it on, make sure everything is good. So let's get this started. We have the build plate already assembled to the rails and the leveling knobs with the heater and the uh, th bent thermistor already kind of installed. So this can go off to the side. This is the top of the printer itself, the uh, upper, basically the upper gantry. This is the entire X and Y control up here. Be careful not to just let this slam shut and move around. So we're gonna throw this on the ground for now. Over in this corner, we have the actual frame rails all bundled up together. We have the left and right carriages, and these are the actual Z motors. Box of tools and goodies ha hanging off to the side. There is so much foam in this. <laughs> now this was a little bit of the tricky part, actually getting all the wires and the control box out of the print, print box. Pretty sure that's everything. So let's th get, put all the foam back in here and get rid of this. So we've got everything nulled out over here, and if you don't know what nulling is, it's actually taking all the parts when you're building something, kind of laying everything out, getting an idea of what you're actually working with. Now we're not fully nulled yet, we haven't opened up the parts box yet, we haven't opened up the rails, we haven't unwrapped this, but this is basically what you're going to end up with. You're going to end up with your control box, you're going to want to inspect all your wires, make sure all your plugs are still intact and nothing's kind of missing or looks like it got torn off. You're going to have eight frame rails, your guide, uh, your, your filament holder, a little roll of filament to kind of get you started, some simple P PLA. You're gonna have your guide frames here and you're gonna wanna make sure that these aren't bent or warped or anything. So be careful uh, when messing around with these. If these aren't straight, your bed isn't gonna be able to move up and down properly and make sure these spin your Z, Z rods and you can actually see as I spin it, this wants to move up and down. Your uh, box of parts, and we're gonna go over this a little bit later. Your bed, make sure nothing's cracked. This is glass, so just be careful when you're taking this off. It is clipped on, but hey, you never know. And like I said, don't let this slide and move around too much. Again, you're gonna to wanna to inspect these wires and make sure nothing's broke. Let's go ahead and break off all this saran wrap that's holding the bed and everything together. Handy dandy instruction booklet. Uh, I wish it was actually as detailed as the Ender 3's build. Um, a lot happens really quickly and we'll be going over this. Now for building sake, I'm gonna leave the plastic on this just until we actually get it on the printer. So with this out, the instructions removed, we can go ahead and move this to the side too. Let's go ahead and open up all these rods. Let's 
let's go ahead and crack open this little box of goodies and get everything out here. So we have some clips for holding our cables, our SD card and SD card reader, our USB cable, most of the hardware and some extra parts for building the printer, and all the tools we're gonna need to actually put this in together. And my absolute favorite tool that comes with Creality 3D printers. A putty knife, and this is actually a little bit of a better putty knife. It has a pretty nice sharp edge, so be careful with that. And your power cable. So let's open all of this up. Cool. So right off the bat, I just want to talk about a couple of these things before we start. Things we're not going to use, things we're going to use. We're not going to need our uh, data cable yet, our USB cable. You're really not going to need to mess with this. It's good to go right out of the box. This is for flashing firmware or controlling it from your computer. So we're going to put that away. These are some uh, guide clips for actually cable management, but we're not going to utilize these and I'll explain later uh, on why we don't do that. This right here, this cool little needle that's in the foam, don't poke yourself, it's really sharp. This is your nozzle cleaner and you're only going to use this later if you actually have some issues or clogs in your nozzle. The USB stick with the micro SD card. Now I just want to say uh, God bless Creality and their printers. However, this micro SD reader will give you issues. Uh, I've never had good luck with them. However, the micro SD card, the 8 gig that these usually come with, is actually pretty good. And uh, these last pretty long and they're a pretty good speed, but the reader itself isn't the best. So if you're have, having trouble with your G code and you're having some weird issues, replace this. This screwdriver, we're really not going to need this at all right now. A couple spare parts. Uh, there's an extra little probe for your BL touch, some extra couplers and clips. So make sure you keep these in a safe place and remember that you have them. And then our putty knife. And we're not going to need this right now because we don't actually have a print. So we can just push, push this off to the side. So everything's safe in there. We can put that away. Over here, we have zip ties for some cable management some 5x30 bolts, we have some 4x10 bolts, some 5x25, our wrenches, our allen keys, and the best thing ever, brand new blue nippers. I love these things. Uh, I also love when the bottom of them blow out and then you have a nice hole, uh, but these are in pristine condition and I have a couple sets of these now that I uh, don't use because I'm afraid of ruining them. Slowly, but eventually, they will turn into this that's just covered in duct tape, but still serve the same purpose. I'm going to substitute these out because I don't want to mess these up. So we have everything set out. I think we're kind of good to go to start actually assembling the body and the frame. So let's start with the actual base. And we're gonna what we're gonna wanna do is kind of aim this towards us and have the control box facing us. So all four of these guy, these uh, frame rails, there's actually some holes sitting right here at the top and you wanna actually orient these so they're at the top of the printer. Don't put them on upside down, just stand them up and you're gonna go ahead and grab your two by 25 bolts and these are actually gonna go through the bottom of your frame into the printer itself. So we're gonna go around, stand all four of them up and get these screws in. For the time being, just throw these in hand tight before we actually go around and tighten all of them with our Allen keys. When tightening these up, you want to make sure they're nice and tight, but don't hulk these down. Don't try to absolutely smash and bend and warp the metal. These are aluminum frames, so you can do some damage to them. So just be careful with that, but tight is tight and they'll square up pretty nicely on their own, just the way that they're designed. I lied before, we're actually going to go ahead and put on the top part of the printer now. So this sits on in a pretty similar relation to the bottom of the frame, except it hangs over the side and you're going to want to make sure that the extruder and the filament sensor are to the back of the printer itself and just lay that down. Make sure you don't drop it or you know accidentally damage it. So the sides of the frame are gonna line up with the holes in the rail that you oriented to the top of the printer. If there are no holes there, you might have installed the rod, the rail upside down. These are gonna get the, the exact same screws that you put in on the bottom, the M25s, and just go ahead and throw these in. There's one on the top of each one and then one on the side. Now, if you're having trouble lining all these holes up, especially with these little bits of tight clearances, go ahead and actually tilt the printer back over and you can loosen the bottom frames again. You might have over tightened them. They might have gone on a little crooked or cocked. So don't be afraid to kind of loosen some things, rearrange it, kind of hand tighten everything in and make sure it lines up. Once everything's lined up, go ahead and tighten everything down. 
I forgot to mention it before, when tightening everything down, and make sure you're using the flat side of your Allen key. You can run everything down with the round side like a screwdriver, but once you actually have to put real force into it, get rid of the rounded side and use the flat side to torque it. The last thing you want to do is strip these out. Now, you probably are never going to take this thing apart, but just on the off chance you do, it's, uh, it's a good habit to get into, especially when disassembling things like your hot end. Those are some screws that you don't want to strip out and risk breaking. All right, those are all tight, good to go. Everything seems to move. Let's move to the next step. Next up is actually putting on the lift frames. Now, there is no difference left and right, but there is very, very much an up and down. Make sure your motor's at the bottom. Just mimic, really mimic the pictures. The best indication I can give you for which one's left and right, even though it really doesn't matter, is the direction of your Z motor, the plug, aim it towards the back of the printer. So this one, the plug's on the facing the camera. So for my orientation, it's gonna be the left one. Slide them in carefully and make sure you don't break anything. And you'll actually see two holes here and two holes down here on the top and bottom of the, uh, the rails that they're actually gonna screw into. So you can just lean that there for now and you're gonna go ahead and you grab your M30s and there should only be just enough of these and throw them in. Now you have the four on the top and the four corners, one, two, three, four, and now there's four at the bottom you have to go and do. So these are where the four screws go on the top, one, two, three, and four, and then if you're looking from behind the printer, it mirrors it on the bottom, one, two, three, and four. So this is the orientation it should look like, and I have the motors aimed backwards, though if they are aimed forwards, it's not the end of the world. The cables are plenty long enough to make it all the way back there. So with this all up, now what we're gonna move into is actually getting our bed onto the printer. What I would suggest doing is moving your Y axis all the way back until it hits the end stop. Nothing's plugged in so we can move everything by hand. Make sure your nozzle is kind of in the center. And if your plates that your bed go on with these Z lead screws are too high up, we're gonna wanna drop them down a couple inches. This way we can get the bed in there. So you can just spin these by hand since nothing's plugged in. And at the best, I would try to eyeball it, maybe kind of drop down to a level and keep them fairly even, but it's not the end of the world if they're not perfect just yet. So I, I dropped them down a little bit and we could put the bed on. So we're gonna wanna orient the bed, this way we can read the Ender logo with the whole printer facing us. Be careful when I'm putting this in, it is glass and you don't wanna break it and make sure your wires aren't pinching anywhere. And the only screws you should have left are the four by tens, the little silver screws, and we can go ahead and start installing these. So once you have the screws kind of started, don't tighten any of them down until you have them all kind of pre-threaded, just by hand. Because what you're gonna wanna do is tighten one side and that's gonna level the bed up or down, hopefully up. And what's gonna happen is the other side's gonna wanna kick up like a seesaw. So then what you can do is spin the other screw up and down until it's now level and kind of pushing up against it. This way you're not accidentally warping or bending anything. So with everything tightened, the next thing it wants you to do is put on your filament holder. Now, a warning, the picture has you put the filament holder on right about here, sitting behind the printer with the actual arm facing into the printer. And I wanna show you why that can be a little bit of a problem. So the instructions would have you mount the filament holder in the back of the printer aimed forward. Now, say you run out of filament and your print bed is level with the actual printer, uh, with the actual filament holder, you're not gonna be able to get this filament off. Now that's just annoying. So yes, you could get a screwdriver in there or an Allen key and disassemble your entire spool holder or what you can do is just flip it the other way. It's a pretty simple fix, but it's something you really might not think about until it unfortunately kind of hinders you and slows you down when you're trying to do a filament change. Whenever I try to put the filament holder on, what I'll do, I'll just disassemble it so I have a little bit more of a straight line to actually get to the metal and the actual set screws. Another little word of advice that I've noticed uh, on one or two printers is you wanna actually bend the spool holder a little bit. Now, the way I'm looking at this, the spool holder is sitting perfectly kind of perpendicular to the frame. And what can happen is as this starts to spin and spin, sometimes this can act, I've seen it only happen twice, but this can roll off and we don't want the, the spool holder actually falling off where we're going. 
So this is a pretty light grade aluminum. You can actually grab this and just bend it just a little. So it's actually cocked up just a little and the spool holder is always gonna wanna fall in instead of out. So now with the spool holder on, the printer built, it's time to kind of plug everything in. And now this is where you can take as much time as you want doing your cable management, making everything look pretty, utilizing the zip ties it came with. But for the sake of the video, we're kind of gonna get everything plugged in and don't judge my mess. I am gonna go back eventually and reroute everything a little bit cleaner. Now before I start that, I wanna talk about this thing, this travesty to justice. This, must, this is probably the only thing I don't like about this printer is this beefy, bulky, just mess of wires. Now you can see your Bowden tube sitting here and this is going to get locked in here, but I'm not going to lock that in just yet. I want to cut out and get rid of the sheathing. It's a lot of weight. You don't need it. It's going to make paying attention to your Bowden tube a lot more of a pain. It's going to put a wicked bend on your Bowden tube, and we don't want that. So we're going to strip this entire thing back. This will actually reveal your Bowden tube and the actual wire to your hot end and your BL touch. And I'm going to go ahead and clip the other zip tie that's on this. Now you can already see most likely that your Bowden tube has this nasty kink in it. Now you can try to work this out. You can try to do whatever you want with this, but in all honesty, in the future video, we're going to talk about why you're going to want to get rid of this white uh, Bowden tube and upgrade it to a uh, PTFE Capricorn tube. But for the time being, this should work just fine. We're not going to worry about the Bowden tube yet. We're going to move that out of the way and we're going to worry about the cable management of everything else. Now everything is nice and labeled in this. You shouldn't have too much of a trouble figuring out where everything goes. The instructions do give pretty good pictures on where your X, Y, and Z all are. And if you have a good understanding of how the printer's built, it'll make it go a lot quicker. Those are your two Z motors, your left and right. It doesn't matter which one goes to which. This is your Y motor right here with a plug right down there. This is your extruder, your filament sensor, your Y end stop with a little trigger, your X end stop, with a little trigger, your X motor, and this is your the whole plug system to your hot end and your actual uh, fan and your BL touch. So let's go and get everything plugged in. So we have everything plugged in now, we're ready to go. I'm just gonna spend a minute or two throwing some zip ties on this to temporarily hold it because this is just a mess. All right, I have everything kind of routed nicely. There's a little uh, hole here you can use to secure the Y and I have it ran down the frame. It's a little bit cleaner. You're gonna to wanna to leave the bed cables pretty loose this way as the bed travels up and down, you have room, and I was able to move everything over this way. Now I wanna talk about the Bowden tube and this whole kind of mess up top here. So now that everything's kind of built, assembled, I wanna talk about a few things you're gonna to wanna to pay extra close attention to before you actually go, turn this on, you know, home it, level it for the first time, okay? And the first thing is your actual uh, hot end and your x-axis. So you want to make sure that it moves pretty freely, but make sure while you're doing this that it isn't actually plugged in over here to the stepper. This way it moves nice and free and you're not uh, sending power into the printer itself. So this, I can move this as much as I want, it's not plugged in. Now these should move pretty good right out of the box. If they're moving too freely, the next thing I want you to do is actually grab the whole assembly itself and try to rock it back and forth. Now you'll see this on the forums a lot where somebody, people will grab this and they'll ask, is this loose? Does this look right? No, it doesn't look right. So what you're going to want to look for is underneath it, you have the three wheels, the two on the top and the one on the back. The one on the back actually has a washer uh, nut on it that has some flat sides. And it just so happens your little double ended wrench here, the large part fits perfectly on that nut that's on the bottom roller wheel. This is called your eccentric nut and there's a couple of these scattered around the printer. So as you, as you rotate this, you'll actually be able to rotate that nut left and right. As you rotate it, this whole assembly is gonna get a lot looser or as you rotate it the other way, it's gonna get tighter. So you're gonna to wanna to wobble it back and forth, back and forth while tightening it until it doesn't wobble anymore. We wanna get it to just that point, but no tighter because you don't wanna over tighten it because you still want this to move nice and free, but you don't want it to wobble. 
The things on the printer should only move in the directions they're designed to. Your X should only move left and right in your X direction. Your Y should only move forward and back. Your Z should only move up and down. If these things are moving in directions in ways they're not meant to, you're going to get bad layer lines, ghosting. You're going to get all these problems. So take some time to look this over and make sure everything's how it's supposed to be. With this moving good, I would go and kind of do something similar to the whole top of the printer, the Y. So again, make sure you unplug your motor and this will move freely. And there's eccentric nuts. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. That's what's actually holding this top rail to the whole frame. Now you really won't have too much of a problem with this one. What you can do is try to twist this left and right. But since there's four rollers, it's really hard for it to be wobbly. This should move absolutely perfectly. Uh, I've, I've never seen anybody actually have this top uh, gantry have any issues. So this moves pretty freely, but just know you do have the options to adjust the tension uh, on the rollers themselves. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is this boat, the stock white Bowden tube and where it actually goes into your hot end in your nozzle. So what I want you to do is take this clip off, take the blue clip off, and then what you're going to have to do is push down on this white lock and lift the tube up at the same time. So push down and pull the tube out. This will probably be the easiest this tube ever comes out for you because this printer's never been heated, uh, actually turned on and heated up. So this is the bottom of your Bowden tube, and you can actually see right from the factory, mine isn't cut flush. It has a little bit of an angle right at the top there. Well, the reason I pulled this out, two reasons. I want to make sure it's seated all the way in, and I want to make sure that this bottom part right here is cut flush. Now, there's a couple different methods you can use to cut this. I wouldn't really recommend using those snippers that came with the printer itself. They're sharp, but they're just more of a crushing cutting feature. Try to get your hands on a razor. You can actually get your hands on one of these that come with the new Bowden uh, Capricorn tubes, and they're literally made exactly for this, for putting in here and cutting the Bowden tube perfectly flush and clean. So now I can put this back in there and not have to worry about it. But one other thing I'm going to do is to make sure that this stays all the way in the coupler. I'm actually going to take a, a razor or something, even sandpaper, and I'm going to actually scuff and scratch the outside of this tube to give it a little bit more bite, especially around here where it actually grips into the coupler. So I know you can't see it, it's white. You can see it just here at the bottom. I scored it up. Just make sure you don't crush, cut, or damage it. I was just giving it a little bit more bite surface. Now this goes into the, the coupler a lot farther than you think it does. I mean, you can just see right there where the old white mark was. And I've obviously I cut a little bit off. So this is gonna go very far in there and it's gonna bottom all the way out. You're gonna wanna make sure that's pushed in there nice and good. And then you're gonna throw your little blue lock back on. And now you know for a fact that that is cut nice and flush before you ever put any filament to it. This tube runs all the way through the hot end right to the bottom of the nozzle and you don't want any gap there. If it's, if it's off just a little, some filament's gonna leak out and you're gonna start having a bad day. While you're looking at all of this, you can, this is actually a good time to kind of check everything over. Make sure all these screws are tight right here. Make sure everything's good to go. Nothing's wobbling. Your BL touch is straight. Everything's plugged in. This looks perfect. Now for cable management's sake, I actually went and attached that white wire to my actual extruder over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Now if you're going to have a failure somewhere with your Bowden tube, it's going to be on the extruder. So the reason I took, didn't put this tube in yet was again to make sure that the end is cut flush. It doesn't really necessarily matter on this side, but it's just a, my OCD kind of kicking in. And then I'm also going to score up the back a lot because this, I don't want this to pop out. And if you've ever seen a, a spaghetti or a Bowden tube blow out, you know exactly what this is, and this is a good way to prevent it. So with this all scored up now, I'm just gonna go ahead, and throw that in. And it, this one doesn't go in anywhere near as much as the other one. And I'm gonna go and get a blue clip out of my spare parts bag and throw it on there. That's all good. So everything's assembled. We made sure our hot end's good, our Bowden tube's good and reinforced. We know that's not just gonna randomly pop out on us now. Cable management's done. Now, you don't have this big heaping weight dragging this down now. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and take two more zip ties, and I'm gonna actually reattach them to the Bowden tube, but now it's more of a kind of a little bit of a helper. It's just a much more stable system now without all that crazy extra tension with all the extra zip ties and then that uh, wire loom that was going over all this. Now, again, make sure your motor is actually unplugged before you do this. I can go move everything around. Everything bundles up nice. It's not drooping. It's not getting all messed up. I can move it, move it to its absolute farthest point. I think we're ready to turn this thing on, power it up, start heating it up and get our filament in it and run our first test print. 
Now, we're moved, we're plugged in. I ran an extension cord because I had no free sockets in the room. So before you actually power it on though, make sure that your nozzle is actually kind of more into the middle of the printer because when the printer powers on, your BL Touch is gonna do a self-test feature and you don't want it hitting anything and risking breaking. The best part of all of this, So this is like a premium glass bed. You can actually see it kind of reflecting a little bit. It has a micro porous surface. This has very, very good adhesion. Um, I've actually upgraded a couple of my other printers to this after using it. I was sworn and stuck on magnetic beds, but I'm starting to kind of fall in love with this thing. Uh, you're gonna have a real good time using this. Uh, just be careful not to scratch it or damage it. So now everything's assembled, everything's plugged in. We're good to go. Let's turn it on. So you wanna make sure that your BL Touch isn't in the way of anything because it's gonna do a little springy self-test motion. So you don't, you wanna make sure that it's not pushed all the way like over here and where it can collide with something. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to level this thing out and make sure everything's good to go. But before we do that, we're gonna heat it up. So go to temp, automatic, and PLA. So it's gonna start heating up to a predetermined temperature, but you can also go ahead and enter this in manually. So I'm actually gonna put this up to 200 and we're gonna make the bed 60. So the touchscreen is pretty nice on these. Cooling, turn the fan off, tons of settings and we're gonna go into this in a minute. And then print, there's nothing on there. With everything nice and warm, we're gonna go ahead and do our first auto level and see what how everything goes. So we're gonna go into settings, we're gonna go to leveling. It's gonna take us to an X, Y, Z. So it's gonna move the nozzle all the way over to that trigger. It's gonna move the Y all the way back and then it's gonna move the Z up. If it goes out of this sequence, something's hooked up wrong. And that's it. And it, you, I can't really see it unfortunately, but there is a little bit of a distance between the nozzle and the actual uh, print bed, but that's okay for now. So we're gonna go back down here and we're actually gonna turn on auto leveling. Everything's zero right now. So we're gonna go ahead and actually hit measure. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna run a 16 cycle, uh, a 16 point test, and it's gonna go to all 16 points on the bed, measure it, measure it, measure it, measure it. It's gonna move all the way around, and it's gonna give you a nice amount of values to see just how unlevel or level the bed is, and then you can adjust from here. And these are the results of our little auto leveling, and the bed isn't too bad. You can see that we're 0 0.25, negative 0.25 in the back left corner, and negative 1 point or 0.14 so uh, not too bad the this 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 bottom corner is um, still a little bit higher than the back but i think i'm kind of okay with this i could chase these numbers all day long and try to get them perfect and even but i'm all right with that now there's a couple things you can do here so one thing you can do is z home and that's going to measure your z home again and if you don't have one now my other ender 5 plus came with this this one did not, but this is a 0.2 millimeter feeler gauge, and it even tells you to use it in the instructions right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit that Z home button, and you're gonna make sure that this feeler gauge can actually pass perfectly under your nozzle with no obstructions. So if it passes through freely, you can lower it down 0.1, and then try it again. So now it touches, so I'm gonna go back up, it passes through. So that's perfect. That's exactly where this wants to be. Then we're gonna go through and actually do our auxiliary leveling and check all of our corners. Now this is very similar to the leveling you'll do on like an Ender or a CR-10S, where it'll give you the options to go to each of the corners or the center of the bed and use a piece of paper. Now a sticky note works absolutely great. And this is actually why we make sure we heat everything up. You want to level the bed when everything's hot. Metal expands when it's hot, whatever bed you're using can warp and expand just a little bit. So when you're leveling, heat it up to the temperature you're printing at and then level your bed. So it's gonna start in the center and we're gonna start with two. Now I'll always keep the sticky note underneath it and if I can't move it around, I'll immediately try to turn the printer off. So when using the sticky note, you're gonna to wanna to feel the sticky note just barely touching the nozzle. It shouldn't grab, it shouldn't crinkle or crumple, it shouldn't be a force to pull through. So you're gonna do this in every corner and my, I can just barely feel the nozzle touching the sticky note if I just pull it ever so lightly. And if that, that's not the case, use your adjustment knobs, go up and down, be very careful. And remember, as you adjust one corner, it's gonna move the entire bed. So just be careful when moving around. I'll leave the sticky note there and I'll go to three. So it's gonna lower it, 
And as it's moving, I'm keeping the sticky note there to make sure it's not grinding into my bed. That one feels perfect too. Let's go to the back one. Ah, all right, that one grabs just a little. So when you actually move the knob, let go of it before you test the paper again. All right, that's good. And we'll do the last corner. Oh, that's perfect. So we can back out of this and you can spend all day adjusting that and getting it absolutely perfect. And these are our numbers again, and we have auto leveling on. So when the printer is actually running, it's actually going to help compensate and using these numbers to automatically adjust the bed when it's actually going and printing. So we can Z home again and center it. I'm happy with these level numbers. If these are confusing guys, honestly, the instructions for leveling the uh, Ender 5 Plus are actually pretty good. Just follow them carefully. Make sure everything's coming out good. It actually gives you some pretty nice pictures. Um, there's tons of other videos on this, and we can talk about this a little bit more later in another video, but I don't want to spend too much time on leveling because it can really eat up a whole video. So with that, let's load up some filament and get a test print going. So this is the filament that the Ender 5 Plus came with. It's some kind of cheaper white PLA. Now I want to warn you, you can see how just um, neat this is wrapped up, and by neat I mean not. Um, I want to warn you that if you're having trouble with your first couple prints, if things aren't coming out the way you want them to, get better PLA. The PLA they send in these isn't the best and it can cause a lot more problems than it's worth. So just get rid of it and get yourself some quality PLA. What I'll do is I'll cut the little bit off before I load it, pull that out. And the part that I'm going to feed into the printer, I'm going to cut it perfectly nice and flush. And then I'm going to actually go and do my best to straighten it out. So now it's nice and straight, and then we're going to come over, put it on our, our bent spool holder so it doesn't fall off. We're going to pass this through our filament runout sensor, and you can hear it click on and off, and then you're going to actually feed it up into the extruder, and you'll see it pass all the way through. You can see it right in there. Now you're going to grab this lever arm right here, and there should be a good amount of spring tension on it and you're gonna feed the filament through. Now there's a hole right up here that this filament should start running all the way through and you'll be able to push it all the way through your Bowden tube. Now if this isn't the case and you can't get it through, pull it back out, cut the edge again, and try to feed it up. That's perfect. So it's going through. Oh, I hit a little bit of resistance and I can actually see it going through my tube. Now once you feel a hard resistance and you think you're at the end of the nozzle, pull it back just a little bit. So there it is, I'm gonna pull it back and we're ready to go. Let's send off our first test print and see how it comes out. So we're gonna pull our SD card out, throw it in the printer, a little SD card slot right here on the side, it's upside down. We're gonna to go to print and there's nothing there. For some reason, Creality isn't sending test prints on the Ender 5 Plus, I don't know why. So we're actually gonna to have to go and slice a benchy real quick. I'm gonna do it super fast, it's not part of this video, it's gonna be for the next video on actually getting this thing dialed in, but we're gonna get a test print. Go to Thingiverse, I'll leave a link down below, Drop the Benchy in the Cura and just slice up some really simple G-code. You can even get uh, calibration tests and pre-made G-code for printers exactly like this. So I went and sliced up just a simple Benchy and there he is. So if you're using any uh, reality printer, a CR10 Max, a CR10S Pro, um, an Ender 5 Plus, and it has this touch screen and you know you put G-code on that SD card, but it's not popping up here, shorten the name. It's something that throws everybody for a loop. Just go into the file itself in your computer, make the name shorter. If it's longer than this character field, it won't display it. And it, it I've seen people troubleshoot things for hours. New G-code, uninstalling and reinstalling. I saw somebody swap out a main board one time before they actually came to this conclusion. I don't know why it's like this, but that's just how things are. So we're heated up, we're leveled, let's send the print. Now, I think this is something a lot of people are unfortunately afraid to do. They're afraid, they seem skittish about watching their first prime line. That first little bit where it actually primes the printer itself and you're watching it go. While it's starting, you can adjust the printer and get that nice, perfect first layer. So please don't be afraid of that. So it's gonna find its center home and then it's gonna go through and it's gonna get another reading of the actual, the level of the bed. So even though the printer's all heated up and we know we leveled it before, before every print, since you have the auto leveling set, it's gonna go through and do the same measurements, all 16 points, before it actually pumps out this print. And while it's going, it's gonna actually compensate for that by moving the bed. So while this finishes, while this is actually about to start printing, what I'll always do is I'll open up this adjust feature right here 
and you can auto adjust or uh, you can adjust while the printer is going that actual z height so as it starts this first prime line and it starts to go i'm going to watch that prime line like a hawk and if it isn't coming out and you're under extruding raise the nozzle up and vice versa if you're not if you're not close enough so i just caught it on the end because my filament wasn't pushed all the way through yet and my prime line is looking absolutely great you can even try to pull it that looks good and my first layer is sticking this is the first print on the sender 5 plus and it's already got some pretty good bed adhesion and i'm really happy with that now real quick what do you say we uh just turn it off oops power loss see the bl touch hitting resume previous print yes so now the bed temp is up and there goes the nozzle temp now say i did actually turn that off and i did want to cancel the print always turn your printer back on a good way is to cycle power turn it off kill the print turn it back on because you're going to turn it off and your nozzle is going to be at that temperature you don't want that to happen let it cool down if i was to do a cycle power kill the print i still need to cool the printer off so turn it back on the print will have stopped but the fans will kick in to actually start cooling everything down so just remember that now you can see right here energy saving mode is on now what this does is after the first couple layers well hold on let's see so it does remember where it was it's going to xyz oh, it's coming out pretty nice I don't know why that went so fast. That was kind of scary. It's working. Now our BL touch is still in an error state because it wasn't able to actually do its self test. So that's going to flash this whole time, but it already has its measurements from the previous print. So you're not going to have to worry about that. Now, right here, you can see economic mode or energy saving mode. And what that's going to do is after a couple of certain layers, it's actually going to turn off your bed temperature. Now this, you can leave this, you can turn it off. I always turn it off because I want to have my bed hot the entire time. I print very tall parts. I want my PLA to stick. Some uh, prints don't really need it. Some PLA doesn't need it. There's back and forth. I use PLA plus a lot and I leave economic mode off. This way my bed stays hot the entire time. So guys, I think that just about does it for this video. I know that was a long one and I really hope you guys followed along if you were building an under five plus or you maybe had one and just want to learn something new. I wanted it to feel like I was more in the room with you, kind of helping you build this. I didn't want it to this be some, you know, really just over exasperated uh, build tutorial. I just wanted it to feel like we were hanging out, you know? Um, and I hope that was conveyed over properly. I'm really excited to do this project and I hope through all of this you guys can learn more about the printers and a lot of the stuff I'm gonna teach and talk about through this whole series can be applied to a multitude of printers. Not just Creality printers, not just artillery printers or TiVo or whatever. It, 3D printer is a kind of a 3D printer. Take your time, understand the components, understand what goes into it. The belts, the steppers, the motors, the Bowden tube, maybe you have a direct drive, the uh, the fake Core XYs that are similar to this, the real Core XYs, the beds that move. There's so much to 3D printing, but once you start understanding a little bit of a corner of it, it starts to really help you flow into everything else. So I really hope I've, uh, you know, either kept your interest through all of this and taught you something please let me know down below if you're really interested in this if you want me to do other build videos like this with the cr10s with the ender 3 with the cr10 max i'll i'd be glad to strip one down put it back in the box and rebuild the whole thing so we'll see how that goes um this bench is coming out pretty quick i actually pumped it up to 200 print speed just to see what happens why not i don't need the benchy anyway if you guys haven't already if you could uh subscribe that would really help me out i like making these types of videos uh, i'm trying to do a nice balance between cosplay and marvel and nerd stuff as opposed to just 3d printing tutorials like this so hopefully i can strike that balance and uh this turns into a pretty cool channel i i've i've loved the growth i've loved all the support thank you again creality i have a lot of plans for this little uh tutorial series if you guys are interested more in cosplay and 3d printing and just the way they meld and mix together uh, i do have a discord there's about 500 members now there's a link for that down below please check that out it is a wonderful place for so many smart people people way smarter than me who have been doing this way longer than me and complete noobs who don't even have the 3d printers yet it's a nice community it doesn't have all the clutter of a lot of the facebook groups questions get answered quickly we have uh game nights and there's special events and there's special announcements and it's just it's a really fun place so please go check that out it would uh it, i promise it will help you i think that just about does it for this video guys 
Uh, please stay tuned for when I upgrade it, when we talk about new extruders and nozzles and Bowden tubes and just, you know, we're gonna continue through this and hopefully again, you guys will be able to learn a lot. So thank you for, so much for watching and have a good day.